We're so excited to share this video with you today because today we're going to talk about how we purchased three RVs in one year. Yeah, you heard that right. We had three RVs in a one year period. So we're going to bring you through the process, go through each one of those RVs and the lessons we learned through the process. Yeah, and we'll explain how we became full-time RVers and why. Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Nicole. And, and we, we are the, the Cajun, Cajun Nomads. Nomads. Well, it's been a little while since we brought a video to you, but I can tell you we've been really, really active. We've been all over the country seeing yes. some of the most beautiful, epic places around America. Yeah, we've been to Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, Jackson Hole. We've been to Texas, and we've been to even on the border of Canada by Caribou, Maine. Right, went through Colorado Springs. Yes. So we have so much great content to share with you over mm -hmm. the last you know, several months that we've been traveling. But today we thought we would tackle an issue that we thought might be interesting and a learning experience for everyone mm -hmm. as we purchased not one, not, not two, two, but three RVs in the past year, just yeah. last year. And we've only been traveling full-time or living full-time for about nine months now. A little over nine months, yeah. And yeah. so it's been a very organic process, I think, for yeah. us to become full-time RVers. Um, we weren't necessarily leaving something behind. Like you hear a lot about like we're leaving the, don't want to be part of the rat race or leaving yeah. the rat race behind or looking for like cheap, minimal living. Um, but for us, it was a little bit different. We were kind of running towards something mm -hmm. more than like trying to leave something. Yeah, and it's interesting how it started for us because it actually started with us sitting at a Starbucks and mm -hmm. going through a process that Nicole's going to share with you. Yeah, back in actually January of 2019, um, we were kind of becoming, I was kind of becoming at a crossroads in my life. He had taken a job in another state, um, in Tampa and Florida, and I was still living back in Louisiana with our youngest son because he was finishing up his high school experience and years, and um, now he was about to wrap up early 2019, so I was going to transition to Florida, yeah. and in the process, you know, we had always talked about when I finished homeschooling the kids, which I had homeschooled for about 18 years, four or four children, um, and worked full time, that... I would travel. It would kind of be like right. my graduation party. So now here we are. <laughs> my graduation I'm, trip. Exactly. And so I'm traveling all over the country yeah. to and fro. And so we started thinking, well, what if we could combine my travels and work right. along with exploring and venturing out? Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, we were struggling with what that looks like and really started to say, hey, when can we do it? What's the timeline? What's holding us back? Mm -hmm. And that's when we sat down and we began to think, what are we really passionate about? What do we really yes. want to do? Yeah, and so as we began that process, I came across this thing called Passion Planner, which I am not paid by Passion Planner. Passion Planner, it's hard to say. Um, they probably don't even know I exist outside <laughs> of me giving them my money for this calendar. Right, right. And they have different ones. They have, you know, different ones. And you don't actually need their calendar to do. It's more of a um, process that it starts you with that I found that was really helpful and really has actually, I would say, really kind of changed our life uh and so basically what we did is we sat down and we prayed and then you're supposed to write down the things that you are actually passionate about the things that you like and embrace so much that you're going to be active in pursuing them well when we first sat down in 2019 in january i noticed that i was writing things that were more like goals like I want to accomplish this or more like um, expectations from other people so as I was doing the process it kind of awakened something in me and I was like what do you like to do so much that you chase after or that you maybe have wanted to chase after but something has been a challenge that you haven't overcome and so through this process and again you don't have to use the passion planner process but just writing stuff down and really focusing and talking back and forth we discovered some things. One, I know I'm I'm pretty much a very spiritual person. And so everything for me is centered around my spiritual life, my soul care. And so for me, one of the things is like, I want to know God and I want to 
see his goodness in the world because I believe that God made a good world. And um, so that was at the top of my list. And then, you know, travel is mm-hmm. huge for both of us. We both like new experiences. Right. So we, we love to discover God and, and, and his expression through mm-hmm. nature and people and relationships mm-hmm. and community. And I think that's why some people struggle with this whole rat race concept is because you feel like Mm -hmm. you're missing out. But the truth is, is that we have the ability to organize our lives in such a way that it brings joy and fulfillment. And we were just at that place where we said we want to do things intentionally. Yes, intentionally. And the things we wanted to do are the things we're passionate about. And I think, you know... um, we discovered as we sat down that we had been to over, I think we've been over 48 states together and eight, eight countries. countries. Mm-hmm. And so we've had amazing experiences. But we, I always kind of thought when I was younger, I would travel in an RV around the states. It wasn't like a goal. It was just like, oh, that'd be fun to do. And so um, it wasn't like that was the forefront of our mind when we were like, how are we going to accomplish these passions? But it has become that kind of organically. Right. So long story shorter, we decided we were going to get an RV. Right. His dad was selling an RV, kind of needed to get rid of it. And uh, it was, how old was that thing? I think it was like 2004. Yeah. It was a Crossroads Crusader, I believe. Or Cruiser or something like that. Or Cruiser. But anyway, it it was old. It needed a lot of work. But I thought, you know what? How hard is it to fix up an RV? (laughs) Yeah. So our thoughts were like, we're going to remodel it. I wanted to re-love it. I had seen all these amazing remodeled RVs online. YouTube makes it look too easy. Yeah. So I was like, we're going to do that right. um, and make it nice. And I thought Josiah, our youngest, when he was done high school, would want to travel with mom right. and go to different locations. And dad would fly in to meet us or wherever he would go for work, we'd go there and kind of explore that city or that, you know, the cool things around there. And um, so, yeah, we bought that. So we purchased our first RV. First things first, we had to clear out a spot in the yard to start working on it. Yes. Taking things out, all the cabinets off to repaint it, mm-hmm. take up all the carpet, fix uh, maybe the water damage areas, yeah. um, had it inspected. Um, and so already, besides the base cost, there was cost starting to be added up. But it was really coming together wonderfully. It looked yeah. great. Yeah, you know, we um, got some help from his brother because we didn't know exactly how to do the floors like around the bathroom right. area and stuff. That. So he did an amazing job. Um, we primarily, uh, me and Josiah, painted and primed and did. we did the pill and stick, you know, and the little backsplash yeah. and all that. And so, and he he really did all the other stuff. Part of the RV experience is preparing for where you're gonna put your RV for a homestead. And so today we're out cleaning up and working and doing all the pressure washing and stuff. was I began to really research RVing, full-time RVing in YouTube. And while I was looking at it, I began to realize, well, now I'm going to have to buy a truck. Mm -hmm. And we really weren't prepared to do that at the time. And it would be hard for Nicole to drive around the country and me fly in and out to meet them whenever I had to go out on business. Um, And Josiah, my youngest, he had his own life. And so it would only be intermittent that he would be a part of that. Right. And so I started thinking, wait a minute, I think we made a mistake. And And we did. And we did. We did and we didn't. We did and it we did It ended up being a good thing. Yeah, it ended up being a good thing because we ultimately decided to sell that RV. Um, mm-hmm. And I began to look at a C classes, and we'll talk about that one in a moment. But I began to look and research and said, well, she could drive that. It's small enough, yeah. no slides. It would be easy to maintain. And so we put the first one on the mm-hmm. market. And a lady who, who was actually in stage four, yeah. um, she was in the last stages of cancer, she was passing away. And so she wanted a place to move on a family's property and finish out her last days. And And she wanted a remodeled old camper. That's right. And (laughs) so so it was perfect. When she showed up, she said, this is it. 
And so yeah. we felt compelled to work with her. We gave her a great deal. Yeah. And um and so we felt good about that. We yeah. we didn't lose money, but we didn't make money, but we really were able to bless someone and we thought, okay, yeah, let's go and start looking now for the second R V. Right. So I tell him, you find what you think you want, and I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to trust it. And that's basically what he did. <laughs> and so I went, I found um, a the, the Mini Winnie um, Winnebago that we did a review on. You can go back and look in one mm -hmm. of our previous videos. It's had a lot of reviews. And it was a great RV. Yeah, it, we loved it. It gave us the mobility. We begin to travel. We begin mm -hmm. to explore the I, RV yeah. world and the camping yeah. world. And I could drive it, you know, easily if I needed to drive it. But at this time, we were doing mostly like vacations in it and then like uh, short work trips yeah, or weekend things. A month stay somewhere and I would the work weekend, in that yeah. area. Um, but it wasn't long after that that COVID uh, became... Well, 2020, all of 2020. 2020 came. Yeah. And in 2020, you know, uh, it changed It changed everything. And right. so we began to find that immediately as I was working in it full time, when our offices shut down in Tampa and we were working remotely, that all of a sudden the, the space got smaller and smaller mm -hmm. and smaller. And yeah. we thought, and I thought, listen, we love camping and we love RVing, but if we're going to do this full time, if we're going to spend more time, this is not going to work. And I didn't want mm -hmm. to give up on RVing simply because circumstances had changed and all of a sudden we found it mm -hmm. pretty much constricting. Yeah, you know, we definitely like experiences. So at this mm -hmm. at this time, too, let me say, Josiah decided he was going to do an internship at a school, at a church. And um, and so he had an apartment that he was going to rent on ground. So he wouldn't have been traveling with this anyway anymore. So we kind of looked at, okay, all the kids are gone. Um, they do come back and forth, but all of them are gone for right now. So what are we going to do for, like, what, for us, for, like, what we like? And Gus, the, I guess, the classy was awesome except for working out of it and right. you don't think about that i think when you're going to purchase an rv for like traveling and for just going to do new experiences together but when you're going to live in it mm -hmm. and that's what we were deciding we're going to live in this in a while um we've lived on a farm we've had actually lived in a tiny house we lived in several apartments we actually lived overseas over a bar for a while <laughs> so we've had some different um experiences, housing yeah. experiences so this is something we went we want to intentionally try this thing for a while so now here we are in gus our winnebago and we know we've got to make a change yes and it's middle 2020 all the chaos going on mm -hmm. and um we were had been quarantined and are sheltered in place for six weeks in right. Louisiana at this point. So I began to look, and I had always had an affinity towards Grand Design. Mm -hmm. um, I love the Winnebago uh, product, but Grand Design yeah. and their service after the sale was something that always caught my attention. And watching some of the YouTubers who had had experiences with it, um, man, I was really impressed with the product. And so I began to look, and we began to really research. Now you gotta understand, going back to the beginning, we had looked at RVs for, I mean, days on end. We would go over to Lazy mm -hmm. Days and Tampa, Florida has a huge inventory. Oh, we spent days in Lazy Days. We, it's awesome. We did. It was awesome. Yeah. And so <laughs> we knew that um, we wanted something that had a separate living, separate mm -hmm. kitchen. And if you go look at our, our Grand Design review, you'll see it had all the things that really worked out for us and a great yeah. space in the dining area for me to use as an office. Yeah. And so we did, so I, so we did yeah. a crazy thing. While owning a 2020 Winnebago, yeah, we sure purchased it's... the Grand Design Solitude yeah. with the hopes that I'd be able to sell this thing without totally getting destroyed and, and depreciation. Yeah, yeah, losing finances. So, yeah. and and he did. He did sell it, and it worked out great. It worked so out. We... Because one of the things that happened during COVID, as you all know, is that uh, sales for RVs started going through the roof, inventory yes. started getting low, and so people were looking to go for outside. <laughs> the Winnebago. Yes. Yeah, because everybody you can go outside, and so and you, sh that's I think was what was interesting is like even though we may have jumped into some things a little early um, because we were trying to pursue something else, it all did work out good. We were blessed with that. I think we didn't lose a lot of money anywhere, so we were very thankful for that. Yeah, um, and I loved the experience in the class C and I we've talked in the future 
down the road getting a truck camper. So yeah, we're kind of uh, liking all the new experiences. Yeah, we like we we actually are able to kind of speak from some perspective of only those different kinds. Though we never did actually travel in the travel trailer, but we also yeah. say, well, look, it'd be cool to have maybe even rent one uh, a truck camper because now to pull this, I have the big fifth wheel. We might as well use it, and maybe that's where yeah. you can hit Alaska yeah, or some like of these, dually, really, yeah, know? some of these really cool boondocking sites that we wouldn't be able to take this this fifth wheel. But I can tell yeah. you this. We are loving this RV. We yes. think that we're going to be in it for a while because it really has matched our lifestyle, which is something that's very important. If you yeah. want to avoid making the mistake of three RVs in one year, um, really think about your lifestyle. Think about how you're going to use it, mm -hmm. how you're going to live in it or out of it, um, and how much time will you be spending yeah. in it. I think all those things influence your decision. Yeah, how much time you're... Because our goal wasn't like we're going to live in it when we first started. It was more yeah. like this was going to be a year of mm -hmm. travel experience for me. Um, but we just love it. And we're learning so much, you know. And how we came to actually the RV as part of pursuing the passion, you know, that I listed before of just knowing God and seeing the good, um, was this, this way. There are four ways for me that I had written down on my actual passion planner, you know, makes you write things in blocks and they were communion, community, communication, and, and creation. Because when, for, to know God, you know, I pray, I communicate with the Lord, I study the Bible, His Word, because um, that's where I believe He has written things to speak to us. Um, we also had, um, I have my notes, so that's why I keep doing this, um, community, you know, getting to meet diverse people really mm -hmm. influence your life and impact it in a good way. Yeah, with all different types of beliefs and all different approaches yes. to life, because I think that's how you can grow with people mm -hmm. And, and those life experiences that you can share influences others and right. you begin to understand other people better to really to really be able to mm -hmm. have those those really con those good connections without everybody being exactly the same all the time right and we believe people are made in the image of God and so yeah. they don't all look like you and they're not gonna all act like you and their personalities are different so I think you can draw good things from people and it just really enriches your life and blesses yeah. your life and our hope and prayer is that people will draw good things from us Absolutely. and in our own walk with the Lord yes and so the third thing is communication you know writing about um, how you you process things and feel things that's just a personal thing I'm just sharing it so you can see how like the journey all kind of collided um, and then creation this is how the RV came into play. I wanted to spend time outside. So what I yep. did, I literally made a calendar in 2019. And I was like, okay, every week I'm going to spend one day outside at least. Like a whole day. Like the Saturday or Friday. And again, I wasn't gainfully employed. So I had the opportunity just to kind of make my schedule. He was all about me um, at that time in life doing what was life-giving. He'd mm -hmm. always say, is it life-giving? Go do that. Um, so it was this good season of rest and just relaxation and just learning you know, learning and experiencing new things. And so that was, so I did that the one day a month. And then I had every three months or every quarter, we were like, let's take a weekend trip somewhere. But it just snowballed, rolled, like it just kept rolling. And we realized as he was traveling for work, we were doing more and more. And so when you're outside and you see just the beauty, mm -hmm. like we have seen this year so much beauty. Um, when we show y'all Glacier eventually in the future, there's like one part, I'm like, I have no more feeling because I'm just so like overwhelmed from how gorgeous the land is and everything that God has made. It just does something. It just fills mm -hmm. your soul. And so it really reminds you that in a world where sometimes like the world can be weighty or there's so many challenges, especially in 2020, that there is goodness. There's so much goodness. And if you just look for it, mm -hmm. you'll find it. And so that was kind of the the reason RVing came into play as we were going outside, we were like, how can we be outside more and experience more things in nature and see what God has made and just experience that goodness. Yeah. I'll just scroll up a little bit. We've got a couple more notes here. I wanted to kind of go over, um, but there's a Psalm that Nicole, you wanted to share. Oh, yeah. And it says, basically the heavens proclaim the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The skies display his craftsmanship day after day. They uh, continue to speak right after night. They make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world.
You know, um, it, it's so true that, you know, um, creation speaks to God's goodness and his mm-hmm. glory. And in these seasons that things are tough, you never know when one hard season is opening the door to one of the most fulfilling seasons you might ever have. That is absolutely true. You know, 2020 at the beginning came with so many challenges for us and um, and for everyone. And so we just had made up our mind to be intentional and pursue the passions that were in our heart. And that is, I'm going to be honest, 2020 has had like some of the worst of times mm-hmm. and the best of times for us. Because yeah. I have seen things that have just made me stand in awe and wonder. And it's just good. You yeah. know? Yeah, I'm reading one of Nicole's notes here, but it says, just like you oh, yeah. see glimpses into an artist's soul when you look at their artwork, you can see God in nature. And mm-hmm. that's such a powerful mm-hmm. reality. Yeah, I, that's for me, that's my experience. You mm-hmm. know, when I see just like the things we've seen this year, it's like you're overwhelmed and you're just like, God is good, you know? Because sometimes I think it, when you live in, in this world and there's so much, there also is bad that you're like, what is happening? Like, what you feel heavy. You know, sure. we've talked to multiple people throughout yeah. this nation this year yeah. that have felt heavy, but overwhelmingly, there have been some pretty optimistic, hopeful, happy people. Like, so, Fam- so, so church- many, f- so in, in all the pain and all, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and the loss that yes. I think we should acknowledge, there's also yeah. been a coming together of people yeah. and family and reconnections. Um, yeah. Even people who lost maybe jobs yeah. found more time to be with their family and new doors begin to open. Mm-hmm. And we know that things pass, things will pass. I mean, things will change yes. and we're going into a new year here soon. Mm-hmm. And so we just wanted to come and encourage you that even if you make mistakes like buying three RVs in one year, um, when you have a it's purpose, like when that. you have a bigger goal behind what you're doing yes. and you just become intentional that, Hey, we're going to just step out. And, uh, I, I believe great things come out of that. So if you go back to the very first video we did, we sat there and we begin to kind of we lay doing. out. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> lay out what our hearts were behind this thing. And I think we've kind of making our full circle back to that moment of the rawness of why we stepped out. We weren't running away from something. We were running towards something. And so we yeah. have really kind of honed in and defined what it is uh, as, as a couple um, and even as YouTubers or whatever that we want to we want to do. And I think it comes down to this. Yeah, I think we, we want to engage embrace explore and expand you know Mm -hmm. our lives um and hopefully enrich yours with our experiences by pursuing what is good yeah and seeing the good and celebrating it you know engage you got to step out you got to step out of comfort zones you got to make a choice to embrace it then and by embracing it you say listen i'm going to take the good with the bad Mm -hmm. if i make a mistake i'm going to overcome it uh we'll get through it you'll make mistakes you will make mistakes absolutely that's part of the process. It's part of it. Explore. Yeah. There's so much to see. There's so much to experience. And I can tell you, the more I explore, it's like it opens up bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then to experience. Yeah, yeah. It's more than just exploring, experiencing it. And yeah. for you, what does that look like? Yeah, that can look very different for everyone. But it is about engaging it mm-hmm. and not not just watching it and letting things, um, I think, come at you. You know, it's one thing like, I heard this thing one time. If you're eating an ice cream sundae, I can tell him how good that ice cream sundae is. I can explain how good the chocolate is, the whipped cream, you know, everything about it. But he can't taste it. You know, there's a, he can understand it. He can imagine it. But to experience something is to taste it and to feel it. And mm-hmm. so I think it's about not just if you have something you want to do, then go do it. You know, Absolutely. don't let limitations or things you think are limits hinder you you know and i think for us that the motivation is that we pursue instead of leave behind something and so Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with wanting to leave behind a rat race or get out of debt that's a good thing but it's not always the motivation for everyone and so what do you want to do today might have nothing to do with rvn but what do you want to do and then how can you do it yep so i know this video has been a little wordy we've we've talked a lot but we felt like um, we needed to give some context to our journey, how we got here, and then where we're going. we got some really awesome things to show you. We hope that if you like this video, you'll subscribe, hit the like button, set your notifications when we do release one, mm-hmm. and we hope to be releasing them more frequently coming up, yeah. uh, that you'll be notified. Uh, but mm-hmm. I can't tell you how much it means to us. We had such great comments from some of you, people we didn't even yeah. know that are watching. is like... Are meeting in town. And yeah. we're meeting in town. And like, hey, we loved your video. And so we appreciate that. And, we, and that's why we do this. We want to connect 
connect with you, mm -hmm. the audience that's engaged, become friends, and then we share experiences. So we'd love to hear about some of your journeys during oh, 2020. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. During 2020 and how you have overcome some of these challenges that have been going on this year. Yeah, and I'd love to hear what you're passionate about. Yeah, Again, it may yeah. not necessarily be RVing, but maybe, you know, who knows? Yeah. Biking, running, it could be it could be crafts, whatever it is that yeah. you're really passionate about in life. Uh, share those comments in this video because it'll inspire other people. You never know who's sitting there on the sidelines ready to engage, mm -hmm. and your encouragement could, could be the real factor in that. I hope that this video uh, kind of gives you some insight to our crazy journey and inspires you or at least warns you <laughs> in some aspect. But there's so much to enjoy, so much to explore. And so until next time, let, let the, the good, good times, times roll. roll.